This talk discussed a paper, Semi-Supervised 3D Hand Object Pose Estimation with Interactions in Time. Estimating 3D Hand and Object Pose from a single image is an extremely challenging problem. Hands and objects are often self-occluded during interactions, and the 3D annotations are scarce and difficult to obtain. Previous works addressed above issue either by using separate networks to encode features, fusing hand object representations by RSTM to get interaction-aware features, or collecting synthetic data for pre-training. However, using separate encoder networks could not well model the interaction between hand and object. Feature fusion by RSTM fails to capture the spatial dependency. And training on synthetic dataset is suboptimal because it is hard to generalize to real-world data. In this paper, we tackled a self-occlusion challenge by explicit contextual reasoning between hand and object representations. We also leveraged the spatial temporal consistency in large-scale hand object videos to generate pseudo-labels for semi-supervised learning. The proposed semi-supervised learning framework is as follows. We train an initial model on an annotated dataset. Then, we deploy it on large-scale video dataset to collect pseudo-labels. We leverage spatial temporal consistency to select confident pseudo-labels for self-training. In the first stage, we perform supervised learning on an annotated dataset. The input RGB image is sent to the shared encoder to extract hand and object features by ROI align. Then, we use transformer architecture to exploit the synergy between hand and object features via the contextual reasoning module, where the query positions in object features could be enhanced by fusing information from the interaction region. After that, the hand and object features are sent to the corresponding decoders. The hand decoder outputs 2D heat maps for each joint, as well as the mono parameters. The object decoder predicts the 2D location of predefined 3D control points and computes the 6D object pose by the PNP algorithm using the 2D to 3D correspondences of the control points. The total loss function of the system is the sum from two decoder branches. Inside a contextual reasoning module, we adopt a transformer architecture. On the right-hand side, we visualize the synergy maps of different object query positions in the contextual reasoning module. After we trained the model on the fully annotated dataset, we deployed a large-scale unlabeled something-something video dataset for 3D hand pseudo label generation. To improve the estimation robustness, we do test-time data augmentation and assemble the predictions. We establish a pipeline for filtering by utilizing the spatial and temporal consistency in the video. Take IO constraint as an example. We solve for the optimal camera parameters that project 3D joints to 2D and reproject estimated 3D mesh to 2D. We calculated the IOU between the provided bounding box and the reprojected ones and set a threshold for filtering. For other constraints, please check out our paper for more details. The obtained pseudo labels on the something something dataset can be seen in the video. The selected frames are in green, unselected ones in red. Those selected pseudo labels cover a variety of hand instances, different daily objects, and interaction patterns. Finally, we conduct self training on a union set of the annotated dataset and those pseudo labels. The diversity of the hand pseudo labels not only improves the hand prediction, but also provides a richer context for hand object interaction reasoning via the contextual reasoning module leading to better object pose estimation. We evaluate the hand object pose performance on the HO3D dataset and visualize the predictions. The first and second column shows the estimated hand mesh and object pose. The color shows the object mesh arrow, small in blue and large in red. The hand pose is evaluated online. The ground truths are unavailable. We compare our method against the baseline without semi-supervised learning and contextual reasoning. It demonstrates our method can well handle the occlusion in the interaction and have much better object pose estimation. As shown in table, semi-supervised learning improves both hand and object pose estimation with or without using the contextual reasoning module. It can also be seen from the table that contextual reasoning module helps to improve the object pose significantly. We evaluate the generalization performance of our model on FPHA dataset before and after semi-supervised learning. The first-person viewpoint and sensors strapped on the hand introduce great challenges for the model's generalization. As can be seen, the proposed method with semi-supervised learning has much better generalization performance than the baseline method. Thanks for watching this talk. For further information about a project, including code and model, please visit our website.